لا إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله فيقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد عون الله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حقا تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول الله أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله كونوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ويقول الله أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة فخلقها منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وبعد Before I mention anything, I'd just like to make mention of a few numbers which I want you to keep in mind. 1560 2080 Let those numbers sink in a bit for a couple seconds and hopefully by the end of this little brief message I will be edified since my air is closer to myself than you and hopefully some of you will be edified or at least receive some of the clarifications or an enlightenment if it is that we are listening and concentrating on what is being said. We give praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed it is only Allah and Allah alone we seek aid from. We seek His guidance. We seek His mercy. We seek refuge only in Allah from the evils of ourselves and our bad deeds. It is only Allah who can guide and whomsoever Allah guides, no one can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves the boat astray, thou wilt find no protector and no guide for him. I profess that there is absolutely no God. There is absolutely no God. Illa Allah except Allah Abu. He has no partners. He has no children. He has no family. He is alone. And I further profess that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our master is the messenger of Allah, the seal of the prophets, the guide, the mercy of mankind. Oh Allah, O oh Lord, have peace and blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad, upon his folks, upon his companions, his descendants, and those who allied with him and followed him unto the day of judgment. Wallah, Wallah, teach us what is useful for us and let us make use of the, what thou hast taught us. Wallah, advance us in beneficial knowledge. Wallah, show us the righteous and the righteousness as right. And bless us and help us to enjoy that which is right. And Allah, show us 
the wrong as wrong and help us and guide us to avoid it and to forbid it. Make us among those who listen to your word and follow the best feeding of it. And admit us by your grace to the realms of the righteous. O oh Allah, O oh Lord, lead us out from the depths of darkness and the illusion of this world under the lights of knowledge and the beauty of the hereafter. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Walillahi alham. Once again, my dear brothers and sisters, we have all been blessed and chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to witness and celebrate another great day. One of two great days in the year of a Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. That is the first part we celebrated a couple of months ago, the day of Eid of Fitr. And today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to keep us alive to witness the greatest of the two, which is the day of the Eid of al -Aha. On this day, we are reminded about the great trials and the tribulation which our Prophet Ibrahim salam, was put through when he was asked to sacrifice that which he loved the best, which was his son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ransomed his son with the Ram, which is practiced and followed throughout from the time of Ibrahim until today, and by Allah's decree until the end of time. The Holy Quran speaks extensively about Prophet Ibrahim. In fact, the name of Ibrahim has appeared in the Holy Quran 69 times. He has been given many beautiful names and titles such as the Khalilullah or the Friend of Allah, the Siddiq or the Truthful One, the Imam or the Leader, the Muslim or the One who submits, the Hanif or the Non-Divian, Worship of the One God, the Millah or the Ummah, of the nation. These are some of the titles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to our beloved Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. And I'm sure that we have heard so much and some of people be dreading having to hear again about the sacrifice of Ibrahim and the temptation of the Iblis and where we get the Jamran, the Sonia of the Jamran, the Sultan of the of the Kaaba, the Hajj, and what have you, which we have heard so many times, and those who are probably listening to IBM and TIN and other stations and so on, would have heard so many numerous lectures about Prophet Ibrahim and the sacrifice and what we are about to celebrate today. But in today's talk, I would just like to take a few minutes to focus on three verses from Surah at takbir In Surah at takbir Ba'ala A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim Atta Seeking Refuge in Allah from Shaitan the Good Curse Allah Subh'ana Ta'ala asks us a question فَأَيْنَ تَدْحَبُونَ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَى ذِكْرُ الْآلَدِينَ لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْتُمْ أَيَسْتَكِيمٌ So where are you going? فَأَيْنَ تَدْحَبُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is questioned in Surah Taqwil. So where are you going? And I would like to ask myself and each one of you this question this morning. We cannot go anywhere if our connection with Allah is not strong. Where are we going with our lives? Where are we going with our deen, our Islam? Where are we going with our relationship with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where are we going and how far have we reached in terms of the construction of our homes in the hereafter? 
Where are we going with our family lives? These are real questions that require real answers that we need to sit down and ponder and think about. If we do not know where we are going, then any road will take you there. Right? If we know we are going to San Fernando, we will not take a bus to Porosby. So where are we going? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is questioning us and reminding us in the next verse, in huwa ila dhikru Very this Quran is a reminder, is remembrance for those who worship their Lord, from their Lord. Our connection can only get strong. Our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can only improve and get strong if we do the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prescribed for us. And this Eid, this season of Eid al-Adha, which commenced with Dhul Qa'da being one of the sacred months, I will end with the month of Muharram, thereafter the other sacred month, these three months, the Qada, the Hijjah and Muharram, three months that come together is very sacred. And it's an opportune time for us to evaluate ourselves. We are three months or so away from the month of Ramadan. Just about that. We reflect on what we achieved during the month of Ramadan and how far we have spent. And after Ramadan, I stood right here. And those of you who are here would remember, we spoke about our connection, our relationship with our Quran and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now is an opportune time to evaluate our connection and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as to where we are going from here. Where we were then, where we are now, and where we are going from here. This is an opportune time for us to exert ourselves and see closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see closest to Allah through the fast, through our dhikr, through our dua, our tilawa, our charity, our tawbah, and do not underestimate the power of that istighfar. Allah reminds us in several places of the Holy Quran, of the tremendous benefits of taqwa and closest to him. For example, he says in Surah 65, And whoever fears Allah, he will make for him ease in his matter. Also in Surah 65 verse 2, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again, And whoever fears Allah, he will make a way out of every difficulty from him. Right? Even from which he least expected. And in Surah Al Anfal, verse 29, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again, And O oh, you who believe, if you fear Allah, He will grant you a criteria, a forecon, to be able to determine right from wrong. And in Surah 78, verse 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further tells us, And for those who have taqwa, there is triumph, there is victory. So we see this connection with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to have with our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has provided so much for us, so much of our ni'mah that He tells us in the Quran, which of the bounties of Allah, which of the bounties that He feels when you deny? <coughs> Give us eyes to see, He give us air to listen, He give us a tongue to speak and to speak, He give us limbs to move, He give us the air to breathe, we are able to live, we are able to see the sunrise and feel the warmth. These are so many and so many other bounties and ni'mah that the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Are we grateful to it? What is that connection and relationship with His Creator who has given us so much? Where are we going with respect to our connection and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Secondly, 
Where are we in our relationship and our destiny in terms of our deen, our Islam, our way of life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna deen Allah al-Islam. Apparently the way of life of Allah is al-Islam. What is our Islam like? What is our relationship with, besides the relationship with Allah? What is our knowledge, our understanding, our practice? Do we know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Do we know what Islam is? Do we know what we need to do as Muslims? Our deen, our knowledge of our deen, how is it? Is it lacking? How, what movements, what attempts, what work, what effort are we putting towards improving our deen and our understanding of our Islam? We should take advantage of the opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, whether it be their classes and sessions in the masjid, or whether they are classes online, or, or books that we can read. Are we making the effort to learn and to understand and to improve our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the knowledge and understanding of our deen? The Prophet used to make dua to Allah and ask Allah for knowledge that was beneficial even though he was the Prophet of Allah. He وسلم, also recommended that we make this dua three times every morning and every evening. I would just like to take the opportunity to go through this dua. It's a very short dua. You can listen to it. Uh, those of you who are interested in learning it, you can see me afterwards. Which the Prophet has said in authentic hadith. Allahumma inni as'alfa ilman nafiya wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan sa'ad mutaqabala wa amalan mutaqabala Again, Allahumma inni as'alfa ilman nafiya wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabala Once more, Allahumma inni أسألك علما نافع ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقابلا. It means, O oh Allah, I ask you for knowledge that is beneficial. We have our knowledge to make cocaine and alcohol and pop. We are not terrorists. We are Muslims. We are not terrorists. We ask you also for good sustenance. Good food, good sustenance, halal, from halal sources, I think that is halal. We can get by get sugar, but it could be from haram means and that makes it haram. And also, for actions that are accepted. Accepted actions, our deeds, our actions must be that is pure, that could be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a very simple dua that is recommended by the Rasul our Prophet, our Nabi, our Muhammad, who we say we love, recommends that we read things for three times every morning, three times every evening, you know, at least, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord the power of your dua, brothers and sisters. So every morning we make this dua, oh Allah, I ask you for beneficial knowledge, for good sustenance and for action that are accepted by you. We ask that we learn and practice this dua daily. Thirdly, where are we with our relationship and our destiny with respect to our families and our family lives? The family unit is an important component of Islam, of the Ummah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much that anything that attacks the integrity, the fabric of the family unit, and threatens that, is haram. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the Rasul have declared war on these things. So we need to look and our relationship and our construct of our family lives, we need to see how sound it is and what effort we are making on the road towards building our family unit. It forms an integral part of the Ummah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are we making effort to ensure that those under our care learn their needs? Are we practicing the Islam in our homes? Are we teaching those under our charge? What are the environment at home? Is it conducive to learning Islam? Is it conducive to the practice of Islam? Fourth, 
Where are we in our destination and our journey towards our hereafter? Which one of us could say that I have 10 more years, or I have 15 more years, or I have 20 more years, and next five years, you know, I will start to pick up the Quran, or next 10 years, I will try to learn to pray at least one salah. Any one of us brave enough to say that we have so many years left in our lives? Brothers and sisters, Allah reminds us that the hereafter is Khairah for Adakar. It is better, it is more lasting than the dunya. We live in this world, but our gaze and our focus should be in the hereafter. That would be our focus should be. The Sahabas were described as a people from this world, but not of this world. Their focus was always in the hereafter. They will chase the hereafter, and the dunya will chase them. Their actions was always about building a home in the hereafter. And this home in the hereafter, my dear brothers and sisters, is not built with dollars and cents, it's not built with mortar and bricks, but they build with good amal, good actions, that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as our salah, our Quran, our dhikr, our charity, our dua, our fasting. These are the things that build those home in the hereafter. What are we compared to our sahabas? What are we and where are we with respect to our destiny in relation to building this home in the hereafter? We do not belong here. We are merely passing through, as we all know. Many of those, if not all of us, would know some member of our family, our friends, our neighbors who have passed on. And we may not be around to see another Eid Allah knows best, but we need to evaluate ourselves and check ourselves with respect to the destination, our final destination. And where are we in this journey and this path, this road to that final destination? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Hadid, اِعْلَمُ أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةَ دُنْيَا لَعِبُ وَلَهُ وَزِنَةٌ وَتَفَاقَرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَافُرُ فِي الْعِلْمِ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ كَمَا فِي الْقَيْدِ الْعَجَبَ عَجْبَ الْقُفَّارَ نَبَاتُ It continues, Whosoever know that the life of this world is only play, and amusement, fuck my future boasting among you, and rivalry in respect of wealth and children, as the likeness of the vegetation after rain, the of the growth is pleasing to the farmer, afterwards it dries up, and you see it turning yellow, then it becomes strong. But in the hereafter there is both a severe torment for the disbelievers, and forgiveness from Allah, and his good pleasure for the believers. This is found in Surah Al-Hadid, the 57th chapter of the Quran. And I advise you to go home and read it. Read it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says in Surah Al-Annam, Surah Al-Annam, which is the 6th chapter of the Holy Quran, وَمَا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبْ وَلَهْمْ وَالدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرُ لِلَّذِينَ يَدَبُونَ and the life of this world is nothing but play and amusement. But far better is the house in the hereafter for those who are al muttaqun Will you let them understand? The muttaqun is those who have their connection and their journey and their road with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned in the first part of the Quran. Those whose connection with Allah is self. It is reported in a hadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings upon him, said, Whoever makes the world his most important matter, Allah will confound his affairs and make poverty appear before his eyes. And he will not get anything from the world but what has been decreed for him. This is the words of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
of mind. Whoever pays the hereafter his most important matter, Allah will settle his affairs and make him content in his heart and the world will come to him although he does not want it. This is found in Sunnah Ibn Majah. And it goes back to what I was saying with respect to the Sahabas. The Sahabas in the time of the Prophet they did not run after this world. When you read the seerah of the Prophet and you make the effort to educate yourself about your deen, and you read about the lives of the Sahabas, you will see what they died, what they left behind. Most of them left a little water bottle which they would make to do with, with their little chair, a little bed, the sword, the shield, and what have you. They did not make the dunya their ilah, their ghoul, their slaving. You know, we see we take night to make day. Our every thought is how to make an extent, or how to make an expire, or how to make an thousand, how to make an exist and next start. Their thought was earning Allah's pleasure. Because how much at the end of the day, how much does any one of us need to eat? And how much bed can we sleep in? How much vehicle can we drive? How much television can we watch? We all have 24 hours in a day. Sometimes we're so sick we can't even watch TV. Sometimes we feel so tired we can't drive the car. We feel it hard to go down the road. At the end of the day, how much is sufficient for us? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of people to walk the face of the earth, when he died, his she was bondage. So they had to use that to pay. He had nothing. So if these people were known as the unique Quranic generation, they were not superhuman beings. They were men and women just like us. Their focus was in the hereafter. Just like Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, the Rasul made dua for him. When he died, his inheritance was so vast, he had four wives, each one of them were millionaires. It is said that he, he was someone, if he lived and robbed, he expected to find a piece of gold. But he did not went after it. He went after the battles, he went after the deed, he went after the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the dunya. When we chase the world, this dunya, we chase it. Allah is going to confound us as the Prophet confound our affairs and we'll always be in that, we'll always be uncontented. We will not have a peace of heart. We will not be contented with whatever we have. We always want more and more and more and more. So much so that the Rasul has said that the only thing that will satisfy man is when his stomach is filled with dirt. When we are down in our graves and our stomach is filled and we start, then we will never be satisfied. So my dear brothers and sisters, my short message to you here today and to myself is let us focus on the verses of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala question us. And let us question ourselves before we are questioned on the day when there will be no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us question ourselves as to where we are in this journey that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us in this world to fulfill. That we have not created man and jinn for no other purpose but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah as was demonstrated by the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahabas, the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin and those with the Quranic generation. That when they strove, they strove with everything that they have for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They learn their deen and they practice their deen. They pick up the Quran every day, they read the Quran, they remember Allah, they sought forgiveness. They sought forgiveness from each other, they sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They live well with each other. Their relationship with their wives and the children was one that was outstanding. That the world, they became conquerors of the world. And Islam ruled the world at that time. Today we are being conquered, or we are treated, being treated as dirt because we have moved away from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Because we have moved away from the Quran and the Sunnah, we are no longer respected, we are no longer in charge. But until we get back to Quran and Sunnah, only then will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us back in charge as Muslims. Now to explain the numbers I gave you at the beginning. 
I said 7.7. And these are statistics that I picked up last night in my full research. As of today, the population of the world as of last night is 7.7 .7 billion and growing very fast. The Muslim population, as the statistics in this research last night showed, 2.1 billion, growing at 1.86% per day. The Christian population is 2.1, 2.5. The Hindu population is just over 1 billion. And there are 1.1 billion people in the world today who do not believe in God, according to the statistics that we saw. The average Muslim between the age of 30 to 40 years who perform Salah or Juma, between 30 and 40 would have attended 1,560 Jumas and listened to 1,560 Kofka between that to 2018. And between the ages of 30 to 40, you will experience between 60, just about 68, if you are of the age 30 to 40. I choose those age based on the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu who says, and I will close with this hadith. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu says, the people of paradise will enter paradise in the most perfect and beautiful form, in the form of their father Adam, and the peace of blessing of Allah be upon him, whom Allah created with his own hand and perfected his form and made his shape beautiful. Everyone who enters paradise will be in the form of Adam. It was narrated by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Allah created Adam in his form, 60 cubits tall, and everyone who enters paradise will be in the form of Adam, 60 cubits tall. With regard to their ages, they will all enter paradise at the age of strength, youth, 33 years old. It was directed from Muad ibn Jabal that the Prophet said, the people of paradise will enter paradise hairless, beardless, with their eyes and mind with all, age 30 or 33 years. It was also narrated by Ahmed from Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, with the words 33 years old, with no doubt. So with this, my dear brothers and sisters, these are some thoughts, these are some reflections that I hope that we will take it, inshallah, in the light it was meant for us to ponder upon, to reflect upon, and to check our destination. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us to live without hate and fear of each other. O Allah help us to promote understanding and dialogue over bitterness and pessimism. O Allah have mercy on our brothers and sisters. <coughs> o Allah have mercy on our brothers and sisters in faith and in humanity who are facing tyranny and oppression all over the world, in the Uyghur, the Uyghur Muslims in China, those in Myanmar, those in Kashmir, Syria, Iraq, Pakistan, those who are being faced with suffering from war, terrorism, genocide of all kinds of injustices, will Allah relieve them of their hardship, will Allah protect us, our families, our communities, our society, keep us on the right path, guide us to live in peace and to spread the message of peace and justice, will Allah make us treat every human being with respect and dignity. O Allah, please accept our good deeds and forgive our shortcomings. O Allah, bless this land and its people and entire humanity. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. O Allah, Muradhan, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa kuru qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum 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 wa lakum